No tak toho stříkem. A dáme ven, dáme ven toho rybka. Jo, to se nevzalo, je vrné 40. Jo, no. So you wanna be a player, but your wheels ain't fly. You gotta hit us up to get a pimped out ride. My ride, but let's switch it up. Let's pimp my nature instead, or oh, oh, let's be even more specific. Let's pimp my bear. So you want to be a player, but your wheels ain't fly. You gotta hit us up to get a pimped out ride. Create a landscape using the surface of a pair. Redefine what is a landscape. Typically, the landscape is the bottom underpainting layer and the trees, leaves, flowers, stones or pears are the top layer. However, any top layer can be redefined and designated as the new bottom underpainting layer. Thus, a new layer of nature is created, double nature, nature squared. But let's zoom out a little bit. Does nature even need pimping? Nature is beautiful, nature is perfect. Why do we even think about pimping it? Well, because we do it from the beginnings of time. Why? Because we feel more at home in pimped nature. The difference between those two pairs is the same as the difference between a wilderness and a cultivated landscape. Stanislav Komarek, in his book uh, Nature and Culture, writes about the distinction. Landscapes that humans perceive as charming or harmonious mostly consist of old cultural regions with a slow intermingling of human and non-human elements. Landscapes without traces of human influence, such as the northern forests in Canada or some pristine rainforest or desert regions, appear alien to the person who is not an enthusiastic conservationist and are perceived as a wilderness, quite monotonous compared to the mosaic of cultivated cultural landscapes. Thanks to human activity, the temperate zone, originally of deciduous forest nature, now includes tiger, stepper, forest step, garden and lake areas. This is even reflected in the Latin term cultura, which means that which is to be cultivated. The term initially referred to the agricultural landscape and its crops, and only later to civilizational phenomena. The polar opposite of cultura was understood to be natura, that which arises naturally. This is my ride. Check out your brand new ride. This, quote, intermingling of human and non-human components is kind of a form of the healthiest possible marriage. And it doesn't matter whether the marriage unfolds on a civilizational scale or on a scale of a single sculpture. The famous French sculptor Auguste Rodin writes about this small-scale, single-sculpture form of marriage in his book on art. Does it not seem to you that verdure is the most appropriate setting for antique sculpture, this little drowsy Eros? Would you not say that he is the god of the garden? His dimpled flesh is brother to this transparent and luxuriant foliage. The Greek artists loved nature so well that their works bathe in it as in their element. Třeba mě zalepí ten ventilek jenom. To se nezalepí, to se když tak veme ředidlem. <laughs> jako Hugo. Všechno to vezmu ředidlem. No, hezky, hezky. Na, yes. Krásná práce, Hugo. Krásná práce. Zlatý ručičky český. No, doslova. <laughs> 
si myslíš? Já si myslím, že jo. In 1977, the American artist Walter de Maria created a work called The Lightning Field, which is comprised of 400 polished stainless steel poles installed in a grid, and its purpose is to catch lightning. One day, a wanderer visited the site, and an idea popped into her mind. Lightning strikes arrive at the poles from the top and travel through them until they reach the underground. The part of the pole underground is its root, Therefore, a bolt of lightning becomes a root at the end of its life. That is fascinating because lightning and tree roots look completely the same. They are twins. However, it doesn't work on normal trees because they just burn. How could I connect lightning and roots? In order to connect the sky and the underground, she designed a metal tree with a single steel pole as its root, which would guide the lightning through the lithospheric plates. Robert Smithson, another American artist and writer, saw this project and asked, Will the root be made out of steel or of rust? Steel probably, because steel is superior to rust. To which he answered through his 1968 essay called A Sedimentation of the Mind, Earth Projects. The more I think about steel itself, devoid of the technological refinements, the more rust becomes the fundamental property of steel. Why steel is valued over rust is a technological value, not an artistic one. Which brings us to a phenomenal conclusion that if car wasn't a technology, just art, and Robert Smithson would be the one pimping the cars, he would probably keep all the rust and even probably added some more rust so the show would go the other way around. That's crazy! But let's get back to the main topic. To si pak vezmeš hledidlem. Hele, pamatuj, všechny problémy v životě se dají řešit hledidlem. Pamatuj. No, jako taky to není fajn. Jo, ale, hele. Tam to jde tak jako nahoru a to jde. No. A to je takový jako, to je takový rostomilý. Já to vezmu. <laughs> Landard is the you've officially been pimped state of nature. State of the elevated level of cultivation. Less natura, more of a cultura. State of nature in which humanity traveled through the journey of becoming, thus coming closer to post-pimped humanism. A spiritual destination. Check out your brand new ride. I drive a 2002 Chevy Cavalier. Oh my goodness, they're my favorite. Mm, delicious. Ow. Uh, that's uh, a good eating. But don't let me hide them all up. Oh no, here, you have some. Tasty, isn't it? Bon appetit. No. Ale pak dáme další. Ale by to taky chtělo něco. Hugo, pojď se na to mrknout. Tady je to takový nudný. Ty vole, to by bylo mega chudu.
Já bych stříkl ten vejfuk, ty vole. Jenom takhle zvenku. Začne hořet, vole. Co? Začne hořet. To bude styl, ale. No. <laughs> Super. Before people invented shovels, they couldn't look under the trees, and so they imagined. They believed that there were entire worlds under the trees, worlds that made the trees come alive. As they drew more and more diagrams of these worlds, they noticed that the diagrams resembled the shape of a pear. The pear became this metaphysical shape that people became obsessed with, as seen in the work of Tracy M. entitled My Bed with Pears. We have been pimping the land, the ground level, the visible nature, but we can also pimp the conceptual spider net located under the visible layer of nature, aka conceptual pimping, which is what the people with pears were doing. This is a tree whose fruits are concepts. This is the life of a tree transcribed into the form of a wave. This is Milan Moore and his studies of how shadows travel over time. These are geological studies based on a metaphor. What if lithospheric plates are just stars? This is a simple hill. And this is his metamagnetic metaphysical field. This is an attempt to form a mass precisely on the borderline between nature and architecture. Is it a man-made monument or a mountain? This graph studies the possibility of rocks invading the realm of air and sky. This is Olga Karlikova and her notations of the bird singing. This is a rocky landscape without colors, and this is a rocky landscape with all colors. The following ones are fluidity studies. In this one we see the leakage of sunlight into the landscape. What if sunlight was liquefied? Or what if geology was liquefied? How would strata react if they suddenly became a fluid substance? These are ideas of a wet mind. What is a wet mind, you ask? Oh, Robert Smithson's essay has the answer on the page 88. The climate of sight changes from wet to dry, and from dry to wet according to one's mental weather. The viewer, be he an artist or a critic, is subject to a climatology of the brain and eye. The wet mind enjoys pools and stains of paint. Paint itself appears to be a kind of liquefaction. Such wet eyes love to look on melting, dissolving, soaking surfaces that give the illusion at times of tending toward a gaseousness, atomization or fogginess. Robert Smithson himself seemed to have a liquid mind since his most famous artworks are to do with water. Que graça, Eu tô We talked about pimping the ground level landscapes and about the conceptual meta level underneath it. But we haven't yet spoken about pimping the space above. Air is just wilderness of space. Space is not cultivated and definitely not pimped. So here is the question for you. What is the name of the tool we use to cultivate the air? Pause the video if you want to take a guess. Co jsi měl o zemi, že tento rok jste vítězem zlatého klacku, vy? Je, yeah, děkuju! Jdeš aj na to, jdeš aj na to! 
já si myslím, že tohle se tu věc korunuje prostě. Mm. Majstrštyk uh, slovenského tuvinku. To jo. Píše. No dejď. No, dejď spolu. It is, of course, architecture. Nature can teach us a lot about architecture. <laughs> but so can Dalibor Veseli, especially in his book Architecture in the Age of Divided Representation, in which he expands on the concept of pimping space through architecture. What the spatiality of the world lacks is the empty space between earth and sky. This is where architecture comes in. Even though this in-between space is empty, it is structured. The structure is defined by the earth and the heavens and is at once universal and local. By making visible the structure of the earth and the heavens and filling in what is missing from it, the architectural work makes the world present in its entirety and the mere habitat becomes a place. This is my ride. Check out your brand new ride. You're fashion and then pet, 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 alright? Nebo takhle tohle, oblepíme to gafou a ujáme zlatý. Kdybychom to hezky oblepili gafou. Jo, hele, to bych udělal. No. Jo, tady, úplně všechny nedáme, ale takhle tady. Necháme to takhle. Teď už jsme v pohodě. Myslím, že jo. Možná, já nevím, možná ještě takhle. Jo, radši, ať, ať, ať. Já si myslím, že může vstříkat, ne? Dvě zlota. No, to bude nice. Ty vole, už to začíná to být. Nice. Vole, jenom tady nám to stejká, necháme to zaschnout a pak tam hodíme ještě. Ty vole, jo, ale ta zlatá vepředu vypadá fakt lidový. Mega, tak zlatý Peugeot, ne? To je zlatý francouzský kánek. <tějí> No, no, tak to máme všechno, ne? No, tak se to máme všechno, ne? No, tak to To je tuning, co? Počuj! To nikdo nemá. 